Hello critters, welcome to today's 3D print. Sadly, no stream today. I got no internet. I'll explain in a moment. So, four o'clock in the morning, my phone starts going crazy. <laughs> it, uh, enough beeps that it woke me up. I was like, what the hell's going on? All my IoT devices were complaining to me. <laughs> I have little outlets and cameras all over the place. I have little electronic outlets so I can turn things on and off remotely and also more importantly see how much power each device is using because this measures power very handy by the way and of course my cameras and they all started complaining you know lost connection lost connection yep internet was down I tried rebooting the router and everything no joy and then I see two doors down a wire hanging from the pole and I'm like that's probably the internet wire <laughs> <laughs> so I called the provider and hopefully they'll be out today to fix it. But as of right now, no internet. Uh, I asked my neighbor, he's no internet too. So it's probably a wire that I see hanging down from the pole. Um, we were going to do the CR6 SE today because I got my wham bam sheet in for it. Because as you know, I got a review unit of the CR6 SE, but I also got the one off Kickstarter. So we're going to build that one. So we'll do that next week now. Assuming... Um, I don't get a new printer in. If I get a new printer, I'll probably do the new printer. And um, some good news. Um, I am looks like I am getting the the print mill printer, the uh, the CR30, the belt drive printer from Creality. They have contacted me, said they're sending one. So super happy. I don't have to eat an executive at Creality now. <laughs> um, the we never finished the shed. I didn't think we were going to. There was not enough time left. And um, my brother was having a really, really hard time. Um, he has a lot of health issues. And especially lung issues. And he he did not cope with the altitude very well. They, um, they almost didn't let him fly home. Because he, um, he was so bad and he had oxygen on the airplane. The pressure in Denver. Because you fly through Denver. Um, basically, once he took off from Philadelphia, he never reached low altitude again, and he just couldn't get enough O2. Um, he can only work like 10, 12 minutes at a time, and he'd be panting like he's out of breath, and he'd have to stop. He was really, really having a hard time with the breathing. It didn't help that it was also cold that week. Of course, I don't even have the heater running now. It's 70 degrees outside. Well, it's 67 now, but it's going to hit like 70. And um, it probably would have helped if it was warmer. But, um, you know, it happens. But on the good news, we got the pellet stove going. So we have heat now. We have a primary heat source. And really good news, that heat actually reaches the ends of the house. And uh, that, it will right now, you know, with it being right around 20 to 30 degrees, you know, minimum temperature at night, um, you know, around freezing mark, the heater is able to keep the house warm on low. And it never drops below 67 and during the day, it keeps it around 73, 74. And when it's really warm like today, I can turn it off. Which is wonderful. I'm getting about one and a quarter to one and a half days per bag on low. Which means when I fill that hopper, it's good for like four days. Which is freaking awesome. Because that means my cost is like four fifty a day. Now, of course, as it gets colder, I'm going to have to turn up the temperature. Because, um... You know, it'll have to put out more BTUs to compensate for the colder outside, sustained colder outside. See here, temperatures cycle. Like today, it's going to be, last night it was 38 degrees. Today, it's going to be 70 degrees, and tonight it's going to be 29 degrees. Um, so it's not cold enough long enough to need hardcore heat. You gain a lot of residual heat just from the radiance from the sun during the day and it being so warm during the day. But once we enter winter, which would be like end of December, or January, uh, true winter, uh, when it starts getting to the point where it's like 20 degrees, 24 hours, then I'll start needing to crank up the heater. But now at least I can. <laughs> because uh, unlike last year, I don't have the money for kerosene or propane this year. I just don't. To heat this house on kerosene, it works wonderfully, but it requires me to run three electric heaters plus the kerosene heater. That's about 600 bucks a month. I don't have it. I'm not even making 600 bucks a month now with COVID. You know, we're fine. You know, we're, we're surviving. But, you know, I don't have 600 bucks a month for heat. I don't, have 600, I, don't, I don't have 600 bucks a month total income. So I can't afford kerosene. So I'm super, super happy I got the um, 
pellet stove going. We got the no no leaks, no fumes, no nothing. That thing is so efficient, I can actually grab the pipe with my hand and it's barely even warm. Very impressive. And surprisingly quiet. I mean, it's not quiet. It's a big blower, but it's not that bad. And, um, you know, today I got the longer C13 cable coming in for it so I can connect it to this. And that'll also allow me to connect it to the battery backup. So if power goes out, the heater will keep running since it shouldn't take that much power. Once the furnace is actually going, it's just a blower and an auger. And um, we also got the power fixed in the house. It turned out, uh, I don't see it, so I can't show it to you. It was a broken outlet. They had painted over a broken outlet. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? So I didn't notice the outlet was broken because the paint was filling the cracks. <laughs> as soon as he pulled the outlet out, the wires fell off the back. So we also replaced a couple more outlets. I'm putting all high quality 20 amp outlets in everywhere. And now I got those AIDA 20 amp outlets. And uh, most of the circuits in the house are 20 amps, so I'm putting high quality outlets in. These are all weather resistant, tamper resistant. So um, he helped me replace some of the more difficult for me to do outlets. Um, we replaced the outlet for the air conditioner and furnace. Eventually I need to run a home run for that AC unit so that it's not on this giant circuit. Um, but we started replacing a couple of the more suspect outlets and then I'll slowly over time replace the rest of them because what's going to happen is the next outlet in line will eventually fail because they, these are the older outlets. This is during that time period in the nineties. I think, I think this is a 92 or 98 house where they use those outlets where you had to push in prongs on the back and they don't really grip the wire. Well, they grip the wire very well, but it's a very small contact patch. And so when you're drawing a lot of power, you're, you know, instead of holding the wire like this, you're holding the wire like this. And so it's a very tiny contact patch holding the wire with those prongs. And what eventually happens is the, the, the amperage cuts the wire, you know, from that tiny contact patch like an arc welder. And eventually the wire breaks and then it pops out. And um, usually it's not a danger because usually the likelihood of both breaking at once is virtually zero it's usually one it'll break and um so we got that fixed it was this outlet right here next to the window and once you turn that on they all started working i also used my little brother and of course oh there it is my little label maker and i actually labeled all the outlets so I have uh, all the um, breakers. So I have all, all but two of the breakers labeled. And I'm pretty sure the last two is my room and my bathroom. And um, so that's good too. I got, only have one crazy circuit in the house. I have one breaker that runs this outlet, this outlet, the hallway outlet. No, no, I'm sorry. The opposite way. The rear breaker runs the dining outlet, the kitchen outlet, the two living room outlets, the shared wall outlet, one outlet in the second bedroom, all of Michelle's outlets, and the bathroom, and the outside outlet, all on one 15 amp breaker. So, <laughs> I mean, at least put the bathroom and the outside outlet on a separate breaker, <laughs> and it's a 15 amp outlet. And I can't upgrade it to a 20 amp outlet because the Romex in the wall is not 20 amp capable. It's, it's, it's a cheaper Romex. So, yeah, eventually I'm going to have to pull a permit and, um, um, start running a uh, new wire i want to basically i want to cut the wire going into michelle's room and then cut the wire going into the bathroom and run a home line trunk for each of those so her room will be on one breaker her bathroom will be on one breaker and then put a second outside outlet out back and then run those two off of one breaker but that's down the road because i don't have the money for that right now but now that i know what everything's powered by now that i know where every outlet goes it's easy to distribute the power load more efficiently and um go from there which it's cool. The um, We figured out why cutting that one wire took out the lights. And that's because this circuit also powers all the lights in the room. So they had to backtrack one wire to get to the ceiling lights. So that explains why that one wire went a weird direction. And um, we did get all the walls up on the uh, shed. And I, I still have to trim two of them to make them the right height. We had to lower it. So all that will be left to do is the joists and roof itself. I have to make two roofs because it's two 10 by 10 sheds. So I have to make a 10 by 10 roof for the one, 10 by 10 for the other. And I can't do that. Um, I'm damn near 500 pounds. I cannot go up on 
the top of a roof. That just would not work. That's a that's a that's a quick way to go to a hospital <laughs> or <a> morgue. <laughs> um, but yeah, otherwise it's it's we're doing okay. We got the um electrical working. We got the heat working, so we won't freeze this winter. <laughs> I'm super happy about that. And go from there. So I apologize for not having a stream. I can't. I I. The, the cellular reception here is simply not sufficient to do a stream. It's, it's not good enough. I'm even going to have to downgrade this video to 720p probably in order to upload it. I'm going to try to do a 1080p upload. We'll see what happens. But um, the cellular connection is real flaky here. And um, so I have to wait until I have proper internet to do a live stream. So Comcast has been very reliable. You know, I've only had one outage the entire time I've been here, and that outage was because a truck hit a pole <laughs> and tore the wires off the pole. Um, and it looks like it happened again. Something caught a wire and tore it down. So they will fix that, and we will be back online. And I am looking forward to getting the print mill, the, the belt printer from Creality going, because I want to have fun with that. I want to I wanna see how long I can print something just for shiggles. <laughs> So I will see you guys later. And thank you for supporting me, especially during the holidays. Don't forget to check out those links down below. I appreciate it. Anytime you use those links, I earn a commission. And as an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. It's required wording by Amazon. I don't want to make the Amazon gods angry. <laughs> but um, that's it. I'll see you guys later.